Fido. Kazuya Yamashita. I'm 32. I live with my parents. I had an older sister named Raimi. She was very good looking. She always had a boyfriend. And two years ago, she got married and left the house. And when she was here... <laughs> You're such a geek. Stay in your room. Don't come out. ...mean to me, so I was really relieved when she left the house. One day, I got a text from her saying she was coming home from dinner. It was always like this. Every time she got into a fight with her husband, she came home and hung out with her old friends. I think she spent half of her time here, to be honest. She just did whatever she wanted. My parents were starting to get worried, but this time, it was more than just a fight. We split up. I'm gonna live here from now on. Oh, you, get out of here! Wait, what? You got a divorce? Yeah, he started getting all stingy and stuff. I need money for makeup and beauty salons, but uh, he just doesn't get it. I got pissed, so I filed for divorce. Oh, it's such a weight off my shoulders. Called up her husband. She just can't stop spending money. I talked to her many times, but I just can't take it anymore. After that, he stops picking up my calls. He had a feeling this would happen sooner or later, but... It's only been two years. I wasn't expecting that. She just lay down on the couch like a bum. We didn't know what to say to her. The next day, I thought she'd start looking for work, but she slept in. She woke up around noon, then... You're not gonna get a job. Mom asked. I will soon, but I'm kinda tired from the divorce, so I'm gonna take some time off. She doesn't look tired. Then, she started stealing money from her parents to hang out with her friends. When my parents started hiding their wallets, she came down for my credit cards. I got a bunch of notifications for stuff I didn't buy. She was buying all kinds of makeup and stuff with my card. What the hell? You can't just steal from us! Huh? Are you lecturing me now? You don't even have a job, loser. You just stay home doing nothing. <laughs> you should be embarrassed. I work from home! And I gotta look after dad, so... Yeah, yeah, whatever. Dad's fine. You're just saying that to justify staying home. Oh, you're such a loser. What the hell was her problem? A few years ago, my dad injured his hip. These days, he needs a cane to walk around. And he was starting to develop dementia. Sometimes he tried to walk out of the house, so someone had to watch him. So I started working from home to help my mom look after dad. My sister didn't do anything to help around the house. And mom couldn't say anything to her because she just started yelling at her every time she told her to get her act together. We just stayed away from her. She did whatever she wanted to. Then something happened. Where's my stuff? Oh, I thought you didn't need them anymore. So I sold them. I got a pretty good price for them. I had a collection of toys. It took me years to get everything, but it was all gone. And she had a new designer bag next to her. No, this can't be happening. Did she sell all my stuff to buy that crap? I couldn't take it anymore. I snapped, but she didn't care. If you have a problem with me, then move out. Is she serious? That night, I told my parents I couldn't take it anymore. I decided to move out. My parents agreed that it was for the best. Three days later, I started moving my stuff out. My sister looked really happy. You moving out? Finally? Yeah, I already got a new place. I'll be out by today. Yay! Uh, your room is mine then. That's fine, but from now on, you gotta fill in for me, okay? Paying the bills, filling out paperwork, and dad's... Yeah, yeah, take care of dad, got it. <laughs> you were able to do it just fine, right? <laughs> Easy. Oh, leave your stuff if you want. I'll sell them for you. She tried to steal my watches and video games, so I snatched the box away from her and ran out. My parents looked really upset. They apologized to me, but I told them it was okay. It was all part of my plan. After I moved out, I kept in touch with my parents. About a month later, I asked mom how she was doing. Turns out she still didn't do anything around the house. Mom had to do everything. No surprises there. Then one day, mom called me and said she couldn't take much more of this. So I decided to move on to the second phase of my plan. I got a ticket for a hot spring resort and sent it to my mom. 
As instructed, she handed the ticket to my sister. She fell right for it. Raimi was going there next Friday. After she left for vacation, I headed back home. I borrowed a minivan from a friend. I grabbed everything I needed and left the house with my parents. I dropped them off at their new home and headed back again. I parked near the house and waited for my sister to return. Then, late at night on Monday, What the hell? What do you mean the house is for sale? Where's mom and dad? My sister called. She was pissed. So I got out of the car and went to see her. There was a for sale sign right outside the house. My sister was speechless. The gate was locked. She couldn't even go inside anymore. Where is mom and dad? Why is the house for sale? What did you do? I told you to look after them, but you didn't do anything. And you kept stealing from them too. Mom couldn't take it anymore. So they decided to move to an elderly home. It was earlier than expected, but they were thinking about it for a while, so... And since we don't need this place anymore, we decided to sell it. What? But I'm their daughter! The house is mine! You can't just sell it without my permission! Nope. It's mom and dad's call. And they said it was okay, so you got no say in this. I'm gonna go home now. Not sure when you'll go, but not my problem. And hey, if you try to go in there, you'll be arrested for breaking and entering, so don't even think about it. Later! She was furious with me, but I hopped into the car and drove off. She called and texted me nonstop, but I ignored her. Then she started coming after my parents. Raimi called the other day. She was really angry with us. I didn't even know what to say to her anymore, so I just said, you're not my daughter anymore, and hung up. Mom was a really nice person, so I was kind of surprised. Good job, Mom. My parents seemed really happy in their new home. They made a lot of new friends, too. They loved it there. Dad was actually starting to feel better now. I'm glad we did this. As for my sister, she went around begging her friends to let her live with them, but that didn't last long. She started losing her friends one after the other. In the end, she had nobody. A friend of mine saw her in the city one night. She was hitting on some guy, but the guy said to her, How old are you? Get away from me! She fell to the ground in shock. She was a mess. My friend told me she looked like an old homeless lady now. Wasn't expecting that. Oh well, she's not my problem anymore, so time to move on with my life. I'm Aiko. I live with my husband and two kids. My husband was always moving due to his job. We just moved into this neighborhood a few weeks ago. We've never had a house with a backyard before, so the kids were pretty excited. It was summertime, so we were gonna have barbecues and play with fireworks. We were all pretty excited, but there was this lady. Her name was Kame. She lived a few houses over. According to my neighbors, she always tried to leech off of others. I actually saw her talking to one of my neighbors once. Hey, you got a new wadding pool, right? Can I have your old one? You're not gonna use it, right? So the rumors were true. I heard she even stole someone's laundry once. All my neighbors told me to watch out for her. I've met people like her before, but I had a really bad feeling about her. And our kids were about the same size, so... Hey, can I have some clothes for my kid? How about that pink one? That'll look great on her! She said, pointing at the laundry drying out in the yard. If I say yes once, she'll just keep coming back, so I refused. She came back a few times after that, but I kept saying no. I tried to avoid her the best I could. But then, a few days later, something happened. I heard some people screaming from my neighbor Sato's house, so I stepped out the door to see what was going on. There was a hole in the float you gave me! I want a new one! What? You're the one that asked me for it! I told you it was old, and now you're asking me to buy you a new one? So she got an old float from her neighbor, but now she was asking her to buy a new one because there was a hole in it. Wow. Mrs. Sato was really nice to me. She taught me all kinds of stuff when I moved here. I didn't want to get involved, but I couldn't just sit back and do nothing. Hey, uh, it's almost time! We better get going! Huh? Oh, 
right, right. Be right there. Sorry, I gotta go. What? She slammed the door and went back inside. She came out the back door on her bicycle a few minutes later. But then, we heard her screaming behind us. Wait! Stop! No! She sounded pissed. I was terrified. Mrs. Sato thanked me. You saved me back there! Thanks! Glad I could be of help. After that, I started being extra careful when stepping out of the house. Fortunately, our kids were in the same grade, so I didn't have to see her at school. Things settled down a bit after that. But then, one Sunday morning, I got woken up by the doorbell. I got out of bed and looked at the camera. It was Kame and her husband. My husband was out golfing that day, so it was just me. I didn't know what to do, but she kept screaming, telling me to come out. I had no choice. Hey, our daughter got injured! She got injured playing with a toy you gave her! You gotta pay us for damages! Huh? What are they talking about? You gave her a broken trampoline! What's wrong with you? My daughter got hurt because of you! We're gonna sue you! Trampoline? You mean the small round one for kids? Yes! She only used it once and it broke! She got this nasty bruise! Why did you give her a broken trampoline? Um, I didn't... It took me a while to figure it out, but I think I knew what he was talking about. I think he was talking about the broken trampoline I had in my backyard. It was broken when we took it out of the moving truck, so I was planning to throw it out. It was pretty big, so I left it outside. A few days ago, when I checked the backyard, it was gone. I thought my husband threw it out for me, so I didn't think much of it. So yeah, I never gave it to anyone. I have no idea how it got to your house. Her husband was confused, but then he realized what was going on. He turned around to his wife and started yelling at her like crazy. She looked devastated. Explain yourself! Why did you take the trampoline from her backyard? Well, I... I mean, she wasn't using it, so... What? That's stealing! And why didn't you tell me this from the beginning? You told me that she gave it to you! Her husband's face was completely red now. Then his wife started crying. Ugh, it was a disaster. A little while later, they finally started heading home. Finally, peace at last! But then, things took a turn for the worse. The other neighbors who heard the commotion and started coming out of their houses, they started complaining about Mrs. Kame to her husband. Turns out she was stealing all kinds of stuff from her neighbors. Wadding pools, designer's clothes, and more. Her husband was speechless. Then, this old lady showed up. I thought she was one of Mrs. Kame's victims, but that wasn't the case. Juko, what have you done? Um, she's been stealing from our neighbors. I'm so embarrassed. Unbelievable. Shoichi, divorce her already. She's an embarrassment to the family. What? Divorce? No, please. I'm sorry. Please. Turns out she was Mrs. Kami's mother-in-law. One of my neighbors told me that she was a famous tea ceremony teacher in town. She had a lot of students in the area. Mrs. Kami was hurting her reputation, so she wanted her out of the family. Can't say that I blame her. After that, I heard them fighting a couple of times. But one day, the fighting stopped. I haven't seen Mrs. Kami since. A few days later, her husband came over to apologize. Turns out he divorced her. She went back to living with her parents. Turns out she was also selling some of the stolen goods online. Her husband had to pay thousands of dollars for damages on her behalf. He looked exhausted. Needless to say, he sued his ex-wife for every dime. But her family was really poor, so she couldn't even pay him in full. I'll pay you back. I just need some time. No interest though, please. She was so pathetic. Unbelievable. 
After that, she went back to live with her parents. She had to work day and night to pay off her debt. She had never worked a day in her life, so it couldn't have been easy. Oh well, she did this to herself. Good riddance. Anyway, things were finally back to normal. We'll probably end up moving in a few years, but until then, I hope we can live in peace. I'm Takuya Suzuki. I'm 18 years old. My parents died in a car accident while I was a kid, so I live with my grandparents. Two years ago, when my grandpa got sick, we started sending him to adult daycare. Good morning, Mr. Suzuki. Let's get your temperature. Adult daycare seemed like a lot of work. I knew how to code, so I decided to make an app to make things easier for people that worked there. I created a database containing all kinds of information regarding the patients, such as medication, body temperature, blood pressure, and more. Then I gave it to the people that worked there for free. It made things much more efficient for them. They loved it. That's when my life started to change. I was still a student back then, so they did a story about me in the newspaper. I was getting interviewed almost every day. I even got offers from multiple tech companies. I was at the top of my world. But my teacher Takeda always spoiled the fun. Motosugu Takeda. He was in his 30s and single. He never complimented his students. Needless to say, he didn't say anything about my success with my app. He was cold. He didn't care about his students. Everyone despised him. One day, I got a really exciting offer. This startup company called Ribura contacted me, offering me a job. They were one of the most famous startup companies in the country. My family is poor, so I wasn't even thinking about college. I wanted to start working as soon as possible and help out my grandparents. So I decided to tell Takeda about this. You hear that? Ribura contacted me. He must be proud of me. This was pretty big news. I thought he'd at least congratulate me. I was wrong. Don't take the job. You'll never make it. Just trust me. What? Did you not hear me? I got an offer from Ribura. What the hell is wrong with you? Whatever. You're my homeroom teacher. That's the only reason I told you. I don't care what you think. I'm gonna go work there. It was a few months before graduation. I never talked to Takeda after that. After graduation, I started working at Ribura. Nice to meet you. But it wasn't what I expected. My supervisor was a cold-hearted dickhead like Takeda. He never taught me anything. Whenever I made a mistake, he flipped out. And Toyama, the CEO, was even worse. Hey, new kid, clean up the office. You're the youngest one here. Why do I have to tell you this, idiot? I don't think he liked me very much. But then, why offer me a job? It didn't make sense. Turns out the guy in HR saw all the hype around me and decided to hire me. That was it. Everyone started talking behind my back. They said I was stuck up. Hey, kid, about that new project. Stop complaining and do it. You said you could do anything, right? The schedule's too tight, sir. Ayama was always yelling at me. And work conditions were terrible at Ribera. There were many engineers there, but only a few of them could actually write code. There was a lot of work to be done, but we were clearly understaffed. Then I made a mistake. A pretty big one. Hey, idiot! What the hell did you do? I put you in charge of that project! I'm sorry. There were so many things I wanted to say to him, but it was a waste of time. You think you're hot shit because you made some apps when you were a kid? Whatever. You're fired. Get the hell out. I was thinking about quitting for a while anyway, so I packed up my things and left. On my way home, I remember what Takeda told me back in high school, so I decided to pay him a visit. So yeah, you were right. I got fired. I see. He brought up some snacks and tea for me. Then he sat down and apologized to me. I didn't know how to say it at the time. I'm not very good with words. Huh? You're a hard worker, and I knew what that guy was like. I had a feeling it wouldn't work. That's why I said all those things. Guy, was he talking about the CEO? And he put his head down. What are you doing? Suzuki, I need your help. Will you help me start a company? Huh? He was trying to create an app for homeschooled kids. It was an online video chat app that could connect to up to 100 people. He actually tried to launch it when he was in college, but... My partner, he betrayed me. I used to work with Toyama. Toyama had connections. He stole the whole idea and took everything for himself. 
Takeda tried to fight it, but he gave up and pursued a career in teaching. Suzuki, I need your help. Honestly, I wasn't that interested, but the system itself wouldn't be that complicated. I was out of a job anyway, so I decided to help. We rented an apartment and worked out of there. And to my surprise, the app did pretty well. Two years later, we had more than 50 employees. Business was good. I didn't want others to go through what I did, so I developed all kinds of apps to improve working conditions. Then I heard some news about Ribura. Turns out they got caught cooking their books. Oh well, not my problem. But then, one day Toyama showed up at my office. Hey Suzuki, long time no see. He seemed different. I don't think he's ever called me by my name before. I hear business is good. Congrats. I knew what this was about. Thanks. Could you come back to Ribera? I'll make you manager. No way. Get out. Uh, you still think you're hot shit, huh? He said get the hell out. Takeda walked in. Toyama jumped up from his chair. Takeda? What are you doing here? Well, I own the place, so... How does it feel, huh? Being surpassed by all the people you betrayed. Shut up! Get the hell out of here. We're working. But he didn't give up. He turned to me and said, Suzuki, I'll pay you three times what they're paying you now. Please help me. Please! No. I don't care how much you pay me. I'm never going back there again. Plus, all you did was bark orders. You're nothing. What did you say? You heard me, asshole. Screw you, bitch! Go to hell! You haven't changed a bit. Go home. You're embarrassing yourself. You heard him. Come on. I'm gonna call the cops in 10 seconds. <laughs> he kept screaming as he walked out the door. Can't believe he offered to triple your salary. I'd never work for him, no matter how much money he gives me. A year later, Ribera went out of business. Nobody saw Toyama after that. It was bound to happen, but I could get pretty cocky too sometimes, so I guess I can learn from his mistakes. Anyways, now I had my own company and employees to worry about. Time to get back. My name is Yuto Higuchi, and I'm 25 years old. I work as a salesman at a company that works with temporary employment and recruitment support. I wasn't always a salesman. And I was doing work at the office before I was moved. I knew that I wasn't good at working with sales, but... Hey, Yaguchi! Where are you zoning out? Senpai, please don't do that. This man with a loud voice is named Utasan. He was one of my superiors at work and was also one of the upperclassmen during my college years. What do you mean by please don't do that? If you don't want me to do things like that, then stand up straight and pay attention in the first place. I'll be waiting in the car. Haruka saw me sighing and laughed from behind me. <laughs> Tough as always. You guys didn't change at all from college. What? You say it simply just because it's not your problem. Haruka from the clerical department was my classmate during college. Now she's my fiance. We started dating after we both started working and now we're about to get married. Our wedding was coming up next month. Look up to Ota Senpai and get more clients, okay? Okay, okay. Oh, and the gift for mom and dad. Did you decide on something? Not yet, but don't talk about the wedding during work. Yuto, it's because you don't do anything until I tell you to do so. We only have one month left, you know? You better be prepared. Yes, ma'am. I give in to persuasion easily, so I didn't think I was a match for Uta Senpai. But I decided to work hard for our future. There are a lot of categories in the human resources industry but our company worked mainly with finding new clients. We did telephone appointments and walk-in sales. Basically, our jobs required us to have thick skin and excellent persuasion skills. These were all skills that I wasn't particularly good at because I'm timid and have bad communication skills. Come on, dude, be a man. You're gonna get played around if you keep acting like that. I had a walk-in sale plan, but got turned away at the door. Huta Senpai started lecturing me in the car while we were on the road. I've told you many times, don't run, don't get scared, and stand up to them. You need to toughen up and remember that, or you're never going to get new clients. But I'm not the type of person that's pushy or self-assertive like you. That mindset is what's not good in the first place. I wanted to train that weak part of you and ask you to get promoted to sales. Come on, don't embarrass me, okay? 
Yes, the reason I was moved to the sales department was that Uta Senpai did some unnecessary persuasion. He might be a good person at heart, but there was a part of him that was too pushy. Haruka's always saying it too. I wish Yuta was as tough as you. You don't have to tell me, I know that. Haruka used to be the manager of the rugby team. I knew that her type was athletic men like Uta Senpai. If that wasn't it, she wouldn't have been able to support the tough rugby boys for four years in college. Gosh, Haruka, if her type was a man like you, she should have said yes when I proposed. Come on, man, you know what they say. You never know what a girl's thinking, things like that. Senpai always stutters a little when talking about Haruka. I was too thick-headed to notice any of these signs at the time. Things had moved to a very intense situation behind my back. Then, the large accident happened. The night before the wedding, I was already nervous and in my room alone, preparing for the groom's speech. Um, I appreciate all of you for coming to celebrate our... I assumed Haruka must be devoting all of her time to preparing as well and didn't think anything about it. Until I got a call from an unknown number. Hello? What? Haruka? The call was coming from the hospital in the city. Haruka had gotten into an accident. I rushed to the hospital and found Haruka lying on the bed. Thankfully, she wasn't heavily injured, but she had yet to regain her consciousness. Haruka! Haruka! I can't believe something like this happened on the day before our wedding! What am I gonna do if Haruka doesn't wake up forever? Before I knew it, tears were filling up my eyes. I wanted Haruka to wake up as quickly as possible. A nurse about the same age as us looked at me sadly and gave me Haruka's belongings. After that, I stood by Haruka's bedside and continued calling her name. But a few minutes before visiting hours were about to end, I looked into Haruka's purse and opened my eyes wide in shock. This is... From her bag, I saw a souvenir from a tourist destination that had recently gone viral on the news. It was a keychain from a location that was said to bring long-lasting love to couples that visited there. Why would Haruka have something like this? I had never visited that spot with Haruka. Then who did she go there with? Is she cheating on me? I shook the bad thoughts away as they popped into my mind. What am I thinking next to Haruka, who had just gone through something terrible? But Haruka had a boyish style, and so the fact that she owned a girly keychain stayed in the back of my mind. After one night, Haruka regained consciousness. Haruka! Thank God! Uh, Gucci-kun, um, where am I? It's been a long time since Haruka called me by my last name. According to the doctor, Haruka's memory was temporarily hazy from the accident. I told Haruka about the accident and explained that we needed to postpone our wedding. I'm not sure if she understood because she just continued to shake her head uncertainly. Did you forget that we're in a relationship? You don't remember anything about going on vacation together? Or about the proposal? Sorry, I feel like I do, but also feel like I don't. Maybe if I see some pictures. Haruka grabbed her phone. Seems like she remembered her password. She tapped on her photo album app and stared at her screen. I looked over her shoulders as well and suddenly was at a loss for words. Wait, Haruka, what is this picture? What? This and that? That too? Why? <gasps> seems as though Haruka had remembered everything once again. Her screams filled the hospital halls. That same afternoon, I called Uta Senpai to the outside of our company building. I heard Haruka's okay now. I'm glad. I'll visit her late. You're awful! I cut off Uta Senpai's words and showed him the picture on my phone. On the picture I sent to myself from Haruka's phone was Uta Senpai posing hand in hand with Haruka at the popular tourist destination I previously talked about. Haruka told me everything in tears. Seems like you guys had a physical relationship since college. Well, um, that's... She was the one... I didn't want to believe it. There was a bunch of pictures that showed proof of your relationship. It's just plain cringe. If I was being honest, I cried by her bedside. Seems as though Uta Senpai wasn't the only guy. Haruka had physical relationship with a couple of other guys since her college days. Besides, you ditched Haruka when she got into the accident, didn't you? What? Oh, uh, how do you? There was a witness. I got a call from the police. The witness said that a buff guy was with her, but the moment the accident happened, he turned pale and ran. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm really sorry. I was scared that everyone at work was going to find out, so I got scared and panicked. You call yourself a man like that? It was the first time yelling at Uta Senpai. I left him there on the spot and went home. A few days later, I saw Uta Senpai through a lawyer. Of course, I had Haruka join in the meeting as well. 
two of them once again admitted that they had a physical relationship behind my back and apologized for it. Instead of yelling, I spoke to Uta Senpai, who was sitting down while hanging his head. What happened to not running away, not being scared, and standing up to them? This is how you're going to act when it comes down to it? Yuto? Um, I'll apologize too. Be quiet for a second. Don't run away this time, okay? The cancellation fee for the wedding and compensation for suffering. I'm going to get as much money out of you two as I can, so keep that in mind. But... I'm so sorry. After that, everyone at work found out about Haruka and Uta Senpai's relationship. Their adultery was even common knowledge among the clients, and the two of them quietly quit their jobs after losing their place of work. According to rumors, Uta Senpai was doing one-day jobs while Haruka worked in the nightlife industry in order to survive. I think that I was lucky to be able to cut off those untrustworthy people from my life. I'm Masayuki Tanaka. I'm 26. I build art frames for TV stations. Art frames are these steel structures used on sets. It's not flashy, but it's an essential part of all TV sets. I never thought I'd be working in the TV industry. I got the idea when I was in sixth grade. My dad took me to a TV station where his friend was working. His name was Mr. Tani, and this changed everything. Mr. Tani was an assistant director at the time. I really enjoyed watching him work. He was like a conductor at an orchestra. I want to be just like him. I want to work in the TV industry. I knew this is what I wanted to do. I couldn't become a director like I wanted to, but I was still really happy to be working here. But like any other company, not everyone was nice. There were people that were really mean. Like this one, Mr. Makita. He was a director, but everyone hated him. He was a relative of one of the board members, and that was the only reason he got this job. He couldn't do anything by himself. All he did was bark orders at people. Just the other day, I saw him yelling at a young assistant director. I told you to finish this yesterday. Do it. Useless. He yelled at her in front of everyone. Things got really awkward after that. I wanted to say something, but I was working too, so I kept my mouth shut. Then a few days later, he came after me. That day, I was there by myself. I had a meeting with the production team. I also had to bring some heavy equipment in. We were a small company, so there was a lot to do. After the meeting, I got the heavy equipment out of the car and placed it on the push cart. But then... Wow! The tire on the cart snapped. Ugh, just my luck. The equipment was way too heavy to carry by hand. I had to borrow a push cart from the TV station. I looked around the floor and saw Mr. Makita. Oh no, not him. I didn't want to talk to him, but I was in a rush, so I told him what happened. So, um, can I borrow a push cart? But then... What? Seriously? You work for us! Get your own equipment! He started yelling at me. I didn't know what to say. What's wrong with your push cart, huh? How is this our problem? I'm sorry, sir, but it was an accident and... Not my problem! Fix it yourself! Get out of my way, now! I didn't have any tools to fix the push cart. I kept asking him for help, but he kept saying no. You're so useless. Where's your cart? Let me see. We walked over to my car. He saw the broken push cart and said, Look at this thing. You should take better care of your equipment, you know. Otherwise, we're going to go with a different company. He had no idea what he was talking about. He was just being a dick. What do you know about equipment? You might be old, but we take good care of our equipment. He turned and glared at me. What did you say to me? You know I can hire someone else to do this, right? You need me more than I need you. Got it? Uh, do you want to keep your job? Carry it with your hands. Go on. What? You know how much this thing weighs? I don't care. Do it. Hurry up. I had no choice. I had to carry the heavy equipment by hand. It took me 30 minutes to carry everything into the studio. I was exhausted. I had never carried anything that heavy in my life. I needed a second to catch my breath. Tired already? You're useless. I think I better hire someone else for this job. What? No! I was done for. But then... You're the one that's useless! This man yelled from the entrance. As he approached Makita, 
His face turned blue. Mr. Tani! It was Mr. Tani, the person that inspired me to work in the TV industry. Makita was all quiet now. He looked down on the floor in silence. Makita, what's wrong with you? How dare you talk to our partners like that? We need them as much as they need us. You realize that? Sir, it's not what it looks like. I was just... He seemed like a completely different person in front of Mr. Tani. Uh, I'm late for a meeting. Then he ran off. Mr. Tani turned towards me. Long time no see, Basayuki. Yeah, it's good to see you. Sorry about him. I'm fine, really. He's a troublemaker. I'm really sorry, but... I know I had to do something about him, but yeah. Anyways, don't worry about him, okay? I'll make sure he won't bother you again. Thank you, sir. Then, Mr. Tani asked one of the staff members to bring me a new push cart and help me unload the rest of my equipment. After I was done, I returned the push cart and got back into my car. I had to make a call, but then... Hello, it's me. Hold it! Mr. Makita came running towards my car. He looked pissed. This is your fault! Now Mr. Tani has pissed at me! You're not getting away with this, asshole! I was getting pretty sick of him. Oh, is that so? Yeah! Once I get my promotion, I'm gonna make sure you never step foot in here again! He was flipping out. I said nothing. Instead, I put the phone on speaker. You're pathetic! What? Oh, Mr. Tani! I... I... Uh... I was on the phone with Mr. Tani. I was thanking him for earlier. You just don't get it, do you? That's it. I've heard enough. Oh, and do you really think you're getting that promotion? Think again. What? No! A few days later, he got a demotion. He was no longer part of the team. Everyone, including the production team, was getting pretty sick of him. So I guess everything worked out for them as well. And the higher-ups finally did something about him. He got transferred to some dead-end position in the middle of nowhere. They didn't even have a farewell party for him. Anyways, I'm glad he got what he deserved. Hope he learned his lesson. But I don't know. I don't think he's going to change. <laughs> Whatever. Not my problem. I'm Tamaki Yamamoto. I'm 37. Both my parents are dead. They died in an accident right after I graduated from college. After the accident, I got a pretty big check from the insurance company. I invested that money into real estate. Today, I own a few properties around town. The other day, I ran into some trouble at one of the parking lots I owned. Ah, uh, not again. This car isn't registered. This woman started parking there without permission. She says she was some kind of YouTuber who was traveling around the country. Her name was Mieta. She was paying me for one of the spots, but she always parked in other spots without permission. And ever since she came along, other cars without a pass started parking there too. I put warning signs on her windshield, but that didn't do anything. I tried talking to her, but she was never around during the day. So one night, I decided to wait for her after it got dark. <sighs> there she is! Hey you! Stop parking in other people's spots! Huh? But nobody's even using it. What's the problem? It's in the contract! I told you this already! So what? It's open! I don't see the problem here! Ah. Uh... Look, I'm pretty famous, okay? If anything, you should be thanking me for using your parking lot! What? No, I... Chill out, seriously. <sighs> she scoffed at me and drove off before I could say anything else. There was just no talking to her, and when I asked the others to park in their own spots, she said I could park here. She said it was paid for. Ask her. I'm not paying for anything. All fingers pointed to Mieta. But she's only paying for that one spot. I tried explaining things to them, but none of them listened. Mieta said it was okay. That's all they said. Then, the scary looking guy started parking there too. When I confronted him, he threatened to hurt me. I decided to ask the police for help. But the police were useless. They just told me to try and work it out with them. Mieta stopped showing up after that, so I called her cell. I've had enough. 
I'm losing customers because of you. You can't keep doing this. Uh, that's not my problem. Stop calling me. Then, she hung up. A few days later, I got a call from the property management company. They told me that Miata was letting her friends park in the spots next to her for free. Ah, uh, that's it! I looked up her address and went to talk to her. Move the car! Now! I can't. I'm busy today. There was just no talking to her. Oh, I'm working right now. I need to finish editing the video. Leave now or I'll call the police! I didn't want any trouble, so I left. Fine. I guess I gotta play the long game. I decided to set up some security cameras to collect evidence, but then... I saw another car being parked in the spot next to hers. Ugh, unbelievable! I waited a few days, but the owner didn't show up. Fine. You wanna play it like this? I got an idea. I called Mieta again. After a few tries, she finally picked up. There's another car parked next to your spot. Do something! Ugh, I'm not even in the country right now. I'll take care of it once I get back. Call your family members then. I need you to handle this right now. I said I'll do it when I get home, okay? When are you gonna be back? Ugh, stop bothering me already! It's past midnight here, okay? You're not gonna do anything, are you? Fine then. Don't say I didn't warn you. What? I said I'll fix it when I get back. Don't do anything to my car! Then, she hung up. I called again, but she ignored me. Alright, just as I thought. I had a plan. Man, I can't wait to see the look on her face when she finds out. A week later, I got a call. Finally! It was Mieta. I went to the parking lot. When I got there, Mieta was flipping out. I don't blame her. I turned the parking lot into an outdoor arena. Oh, it's for a local event. I let them use this place every year for their charity concert. What? You never told me! Actually, I did. Check the documents I gave you. She never read the contract. Just as I thought. By the way, I let the other customers use my other piece of land during the concert. <laughs> but they'll be gone soon, right? Um, yeah, but the stage set will still be there. What, 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 what about my car then? How am I supposed to get out? I warned you. You didn't listen. I surrounded their cars with stage sets and speakers, so there was no way out for them. What the hell? That's my dad's car. You said it was fine! And you charged us too! What the hell? I want my money back! Mieta's friend started yelling at her. She was starting to cry. Hey! Do something! Not my problem. What? No! Help me! She begged me for help, but I ignored her. Her friends were furious with her. They all had to call a cab. Needless to say, Mieta had to pay for everything. Later, Mieta's parents came and apologized to me. Looks like one of her friends told them about what happened. We're terribly sorry. We thought she was in school. We had no idea about any of this. Turns out, her parents gave her money for tuition, but she ended up spending it all on vacation. She decided to film the whole thing and uploaded it online. She got a few likes on her video, so she decided to become a full-time YouTuber. But it was just a one-time thing. She didn't make enough money as a YouTuber. Soon, she ran out of money. So she started renting out parking spaces for some quick cash. Her parents were normal people, thank goodness. They paid me for all the damages. <sighs> She's gonna get kicked out of school soon. We're taking her back with us. I see. Maybe it's for the best. And when everyone found out what she was doing, her reputation went down the drain. She had nothing. 
Sucks for her, but she did this to herself, so... Anyways, I decided to set up some security cameras to make sure something like this didn't happen in the future. I'm sure I'll never run into someone like her again, but I guess I can never be too careful. I'm Hiroyuki Saito. I'm in high school. Dad died when I was a kid. It was just me and my mom. I realized that my family was poor when I was in middle school. I was the only one in class that wore old clothes. Video games? <laughs> Forget it. I had a cell phone, but it was an old model that nobody's ever heard of. I never knew what to talk about with my friends. I got pretty good grades, but that was about it. His family is poor. I feel bad for him. It's so awkward. Kids at school didn't bully me or anything, but things were kind of awkward. Being poor wasn't easy, but I made peace with it. I knew mom was working long hours to put food on the table, and I was really grateful for her. Once, I offered to get a job myself to help out, but she said, No, you study, okay? You don't have to worry about a thing. She told me to stay in school and focus on my studies. My mom did everything she could for me. It's pouring out. Yeah. Hey, look. Uh... Look at that umbrella. There are holes in it. Leave him alone, man. He can't afford to buy a new one. Kids at school were mean to me, but I didn't have time for them. I had to work hard for me and my mom. As I was getting ready to leave, my classmate Sanae Kitagawa was staring out the window. Her dad was the CEO of some big company. She was loaded. She was the complete opposite of me. And looks like she forgot her umbrella. Uh... Huh? You wanna use this? My clothes were worn out anyways, but hers looks expensive, so I offered her my umbrella. Are you kidding me? Oh, poor piece of crap. Get lost. Then she snatched the umbrella out of my hands. Ugh, so dirty. Better wash my hands later. Then she left. I ran home through the rain. I should have just kept my umbrella. Then one day, this new girl joined our class. I'm Mika Kudo. Nice to meet you all. She was really friendly. She got along with everyone in no time. She already had more friends than me on day one. She was nothing like me. I saw her talking to Kitagawa too. I guess they were friends now. Uh, I got an F again! Looks like she was struggling with schoolwork. She always looked upset when she got her test back. Hey, Saito, what did you get? Huh? Uh... Nobody ever talked to me, so people started staring at her. Uh, you probably shouldn't be talking to me. Wow, you almost got a perfect score! That's amazing, can you tutor me? Huh? Me? Yeah, please! I could really use your help! If she hangs out with me, she'll probably get picked on. I was worried, but I was so happy that she came over and talked to me like that. I agreed to help her with her studies. I started tutoring her during recess and after school. You're a really good teacher. I learned that she was pretty smart. She was just busy with her family moving around and stuff. She just needed some time to catch up. Then, one day during recess, Kitagawa walked by us while I was tutoring her. Hey, Sane, You should join us. You got an F on your last test, didn't you? I don't need good grades. Why? What about college exams? College? <laughs> Who cares? I don't even need to work as long as I got my dad. Oh. And you? What's the point of studying? Huh? How will you even pay for college? You're way too poor for that. It's a waste of time. What did you say? Mika yelled at her. She stood up for me. I was really happy. It's true. It's not my fault his family is dirt poor. You got nothing to offer me, Saito. <laughs> Get away from me. Sine, what's wrong with you? You can't talk to other people like that. You're not my friend anymore. Fine by me. If you want to hang out with this loser, go ahead. Then, Kitagawa left. Sorry. No, don't be. You're a good person. Don't let her get to you. Um, thanks. Nobody's ever said that to me before. Really? Well, if they can't see that, that's their loss. Mika didn't care about what others thought. She kept hanging out with me. 
I finally had a friend. But the good times didn't last very long. About six months later, she had to move again. Good luck. Thanks for everything. Yeah. I didn't even know what to say to her. I was pretty upset. I missed her. So I studied even harder to distract myself. After high school, I got into a national university on a full scholarship. I worked really hard for six years and became a doctor. I've always wanted to be a doctor ever since I was a kid, and I wanted to make my mom proud. I worked as a surgeon. Work was tough but rewarding, and I was pretty good at my job too. Life was good. One day, I got an invitation to a class reunion. I wasn't able to make it to the previous ones because I was too busy with work. I wasn't really interested. But when I read the letter inside, I changed my mind. I decided to attend. Class reunion. Some guys came up to me as soon as I walked in. Yo, Saito. Hey, man. My old classmates. The jerks who used to pick on me. You're some kind of super doctor now, right? Cool, man. Yeah, you always got good grades. They knew nothing about me. Back then, I was the poor kid. And now, I was a doctor. That's all I was to them. Hey, if I ever get sick, take care of me, yeah? With a friend discount. Uh, nice. Me too. Um, I'm sorry, but... Do I know you? And I knew nothing about them either. Frankly, I didn't care. I walked past them and went inside. Kitagawa was there too. Hey Saito, glad you came. She's smiling at me. That's a first. Thanks for fixing up my dad. I just did my job. Last year, I performed an operation on her father. In other words, I saved her dad's life. Ugh, all these guys here, they're such losers. But you, you're different. Dad really appreciates what you did for him. He asked me to invite you to dinner. We got this three-star restaurant we always go to. <laughs> what do you think? Uh... Most guys aren't good enough for me. They don't even come close. But you, you got it all. No, stop. Oh, you're so modest. Hey, Saito, want to marry me? We'll be so happy together. Marry you? Yeah, it's a win-win, don't you think? Uh, but what can you do for me? Huh? <laughs> what do you mean? My family is loaded. No, I mean you. What can you do? What do you do for work? I don't. I don't need to. Can you cook? <laughs> no, we got a maid for that. Uh, so what can you do? If I remember correctly, you always got bad grades too. Uh, what? So, you leech off of your parents, and you can't really do anything. So, um, why would I marry you? What's in it for me? If you want to marry me, get a job like a normal person. Okay? You're useless to me. What? What? How dare you, you little... Now you know how it feels. Then, Mika showed up. She was the one that sent me the invitation. You know nothing about him. You only want to marry him because he's a doctor. What makes you think that he'll marry you? You're almost 30. You've never had a job and you can't do anything. What? Plus, I don't need your money. I got plenty of that already. So yeah, you got nothing to offer me. Screw you! You always got bad grades too! What do you do for work? I bet you... Mind your own business. Huh? I said, mind your own business. My parents moved a lot, so I can speak Chinese. I'm an interpreter. Mika, let's go. Forget her. I came here because I wanted to talk to you. Kitagawa was still trying to say something, but we just ignored her and went outside. That's amazing, though. You actually became a doctor. You must have worked really hard. <laughs> yeah. When I saw you on TV, I was so surprised. You seemed like a completely different person. You were always really nice to me, Mika. Thank you for that. Of course. You too, Hiroyuki. My heart was pounding, but I had to tell her. I gathered my courage and said... Look, I wanted to tell you something. Um, well, uh, I really like... Marry me! Huh? She was blushing. Her face looked like a tomato. I always liked you. Will you marry me? I started laughing out loud. Uh, why are you 
laughing at me? <laughs> I'm sorry, but you just said everything I was gonna say. So, I asked her again. Mika, I always liked you too. Will you go out with me? Of course. And so, we started dating. About six months later, we got married and started living together. Life was good. By the way, Kitagawa's family business wasn't doing so well. She now had to get a job like everyone else. But since she didn't have any marketable skills, she had a hard time getting a job. I heard she got kicked out of her house. I kind of felt bad for her, but oh well. I sure hope she learned her lesson. Growing up in a poor family wasn't easy, but I kind of miss it. It's what helped me become the man I am today. And Mika and Mom were always there for me. I could never thank them enough. Just glad everything worked out. I'm Monocato. I know I shouldn't say things like this, but I'm pretty good looking. I'm in the top group of the school hierarchy. I always call my boyfriend Ryogo and my best friend Misaki for about an hour at night. That day, I put Misaki on speaker and I was talking to her on my bed. You know, Ryogo's so possessive. Well, he loves you that much. I guess so. Oh, my phone is dying. I search for my charger as I continue speaking with Misaki, and I remember that there was an outlet that I don't usually use under my bed. I thought it was around here somewhere. I use my phone as a light and a flash under my bed, and there was an unfamiliar plug on the outlet. Hmm, this plug looks old. I, I don't remember buying it. Wait a minute. Is this what I think it is? The other day, I was watching a TV program about security, and this looks exactly like the bug I saw on the program. I turned off the phone and opened the plug with a screwdriver. There's a suspicious-looking base. Is this really a bug? This freaks me out and pisses me off at the same time! This has to be my nerdy brother in the next room. All he does is watch anime through the night and screams, I love sisters or something sick! Oh, there's only one person around here who could do such a sick thing. Hey, bro! You bugged my room?! What are you talking about? Oh, cut the crap! Look at this! I can see that this looks like a bug, but can you prove that I was the one who did this? Well, you're always talking about how you love sisters, and you're staring at me in a creepy way sometimes! Don't make me laugh, sister. I can only love people in two dimensions. You should know that more than anyone. Uh, well, it's true. I've never seen him get interested in actual girls. Then who could it be? It's hard to think that a pervert snuck in and bugged the room. Which means it's someone you've invited into your room in the past. Well, the only people I invite are Ryogo and Misaki. Let's go look for some evidence, shall we? We went back to my room and searched everywhere for some kind of evidence, but there was nothing. Hi, Mana. Uh, you don't look so well. What's wrong? Well, the thing is, I told her about the bug. Um, I don't want to say this, but could it be Ryogo? Why would you say that? Yesterday, you were saying yourself that he's really possessive. I've heard there are obsessive boyfriends who bug their girlfriends. Ryoko? For real? I didn't want to believe it, but after I went home, I talked to my brother. I decided to call Ryoko that night and make sure it wasn't him. So, you don't know anything, right? What? You actually think I would do that? Uh, th that's not what I meant. Oh my god, you don't believe me! I mean, you're really obsessive. You always ask me who I was with or where I was. You're pissing me off. I'm hanging up now. Uh, hey! He hung up on me. I tossed my phone on the bed and buried my head in my hands. The next day, my mom brought me some mail from the post box. Who would send me a, a mail? I opened the mail and gasped. There I saw red letters that said, Stupid loser, break up with your boyfriend already. When I was about to tear it up and throw it away, my brother stopped me. Wait, that is evidence. Oh yeah, uh, you're right. I was feeling down by the mail, but I somehow dragged myself to school. Hey, uh, why the long face? Did something bad happen? 
I received a letter, and it said I was a stupid loser. Misaki looked genuinely worried. Why don't you try and keep a distance with your boyfriend? You know, just in case. Maybe I should. It never rains, but it pours. That night, Ryogo asked me to break up with him. Why? You're the one who doubted me for the bug! That's the last straw! I was just making sure! I tried to explain myself, but it seemed like he didn't trust me anymore. Fair enough. I mean, if I were him, I would be upset too. I continued to apologize, but he didn't change his mind. Ryogo said, I can't do this anymore. Let's end things. And he hung up. God, what is happening? I threw my phone against my bed. But this is exactly how we wanted things to go. The weekend finished and it was Monday after classes. Hey, sorry for making you wait. I wanted to talk to you. What? I want you to be my boyfriend. Mana's my girlfriend. You know that, right? Huh? Uh, I, I thought you guys broke up. Like we had imagined, Misaki seemed to be really confused. Misaki. Uh, Mana, uh, wh what are you doing here? Why would you think we're broken up? I never said that. Except for when I was in my room. Wh what are you saying? She was trying to dodge the conversation, but she's all stiff and she's looking pale. Oh, just tell me the truth. Misaki, you're the one who bugged my room, right? I'm telling you, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, well, if you're being like that... I eyed Ryogo and said, Ryogo, come on, tell her. Ryogo looked straight into Misaki's eyes and said, I have no idea what's going on, but sorry, I can't go out with you. I took Ryogo by his hand and left the room. Misaki seemed to be sobbing, but I didn't look back. Hey, it went well. Good. But I can't believe it was actually Misaki. Well, you'd have to know the person well to set a bug in a hidden place. There was actually one more bug in my room. It was right behind the TV. Again, a hard place to find. You'd have to be in this room a couple of times to know this place. If it were my brother or my parents by any chance, there would be a receiver of the bug somewhere. But since we couldn't find any, we naturally came to the conclusion that it must have been Misaki, because she comes to my room the most often. After that, we decided to discuss important things through texts and made sure it didn't seem like we noticed who it was. It was easy enough to see that the person who bugged my room was the person who sent me that mail. So as it was written on the letter, we faked our breakup. So it couldn't have been Ryogo. So how was it? Did I not sound exactly like him? Ugh, no way. If she had used a better bug, she definitely would have noticed. Both of the bugs were cheap ones made overseas, ones that students can easily buy. We figured if my brother called me from his room, the person who bugged my room wouldn't know the difference. But why would she do that? Apparently, she's always had a thing for him. She would say she gave up, but her mind was saying something else. This 3D world is impossible. 2D is the best. Misaki didn't show up to school after this, and three months later, she transferred. I mean, she literally broke the law, so no surprise there. I once saw her in the city, but she was walking alone, looking all soggy. Her impression changed a lot, and I sort of felt bad for her. Instead, I've become close with my brother. He teaches me all the anime he likes, but he is still a nerd. <laughs> After that drama, Ryogo seemed to trust me more than before and stopped being so possessive. I lost my best friend, but I've got two important people in my life, my brother and my boyfriend. I'm just crossing my fingers that I can enjoy an ordinary school life from now on. <laughs>